Hi there, welcome back to the DevO. I am Roman and this is the ninth episode of our F Sharp introductory series. In the last episode, I introduced a new data structure to you, records. I showed you nice ways how to update them, how to create them, and how they enable you to define really nice domain specific languages for your specific use case. With the help of records, we were able to, to let Clara sell different sizes of her ice creams. So we introduced a small size, a medium size, and the large size with different prices. And now Clara wants to do one more thing she always wanted to do. She knows that for a lot of people, Mondays are awful. And she wants to make the world a better place. So she decides that from now on, Monday is strawberry day, which means 50% off of the price of the strawberry ice creams. In the last eight episodes, we've learned already a lot. So we are actually able to, to implement this feature um, without introducing any new concepts. So we can just do it. But in order to make it even more easy or nicer to, to implement domain spe uh, specific languages, I will introduce another concept to you, which is called currying. So, los geht's. So we want to implement the feature that we want to be able to get specific ice creams on specific days a, a couple of percent off or maybe half of the price off. In order to be able to do this, we need two things. The first thing we need is we need to know on which day one ice cream was sold. And the second thing we need to, to do or to know is we need to be able to create a sale. We need to be able to enter in our system on which day, which ice cream is actually on sale and for how much or how, how big the sale actually is. So let's do this. As you can see, we've already defined a lot of types in our program and we have already defined a lot of logic for our types. So if you have something like this, I, I always recommend that you start with the types and then help, let the compiler help you to actually solve your problems or implement your features. So let's do it. What do we want to implement? We want to know on which weekday the ice was actually sold. So we could say the weekday is a string like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. And then we need a new type and I think we could use a record here as well and call it on sale. And here we actually need to know which flavor, which is a flavor. We need to know on which weekday, which is a string. And we need to know the factor, maybe how much the it's it's actually off. So this could be a float again because the fr the price is a float as well. All right, now we have done this. Great, and we see that we get a lot of compiler errors that should be fixed uh, in order to 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 be able to run this program. But there is one more thing. When you think back a couple of episodes when we were talking about the flavors. Um, Using a string for these kinds of enumerations, because we only had a specific number, of finite number of, of possible cases, it was very risky and we could introduce a lot of bugs for when, when we are actually using strings. And I think it's the same with weekdays. Weekdays is also a finite number of cases that we can actually enumerate. So if we have this, I think it's always a good way to fall back to discriminated unions. Let's do this. Here we have our list of possible weekdays. And now we don't need to use a string anymore. We can say here that the weekday is actually a weekday and that the weekday, whoop, the weekday in here is actually a weekday as well. Now that we have done this, let's actually fix the compiler errors. So here we have our sold constructor for our ice sold. And it says that we need a flavor and return an ice sold. But we are missing one more um, property, which is actually the weekday. And I think it would be smart to make this a parameter of the function as well. So we say sold gets the weekday 
and the flavor. So we now have a new function that gets a weekday, gets a flavor and returns a nice salt. All right, nice. Down here we see that we do not need to change too much. So for example, we had our helper function here, but that, that updated the, the size of the ice that was sold. But because it was only responsible for one property of our record, we don't need to change it at all, which is really nice. All right, let's keep fixing our bugs. Um, down here we have had the sales list. And of course we just changed the sold function that it takes two parameters instead of one. So now the first parameter needs to be a weekday. So we can just add those weekdays. One, two, three. And this is Monday. And here and here we have Wednesday. And maybe Clara had a day off or something on Tuesday. But now we've changed our sales list and now we know on which weekday the, the, the ice was actually sold. Okay, let's fix this last thing down here. What is it? Oh, okay. This thing sometimes happens in F sharp when you have two records that have the same um, properties here, as you can see, flavor and flavor. Sometimes um, during the nature of the F sharp compiler, it happens that when F sharp tries to actually infer the type of the record, is it I sold or is it on sale? It, it, it chooses the wrong one. And in this case, it chooses the on sale one. But what we know that we want to have an ice sold. So when this kind of stuff happens, um, we need to, to put in a type, uh, actual type annotation in here. And then F sharp knows um, that this is an ice sold and not an on, on sale record type. So we should be able to run this again. Cool. No more compiler errors and we get six euro and a bit. So now that we have done this, we, we, we haven't actually done too much because there's no way for us up to now to actually enter a list of sales in, in our program. So let's do this. First of all, we need to create a constructor function for the on sale to, to make it readable um, or to make it much easier to actually enter those, those um, sales in our program. So let's write a function here that actually creates our on sale records. Here we've done it. And this record, uh, this function now is called also on sale um, and, and it gets a weekday and a flavor. So on which day is this flavor on sale? And by default, it has a factor of 50%. So it's 50% uh, cheaper that day. So now that we have done this, we can actually enter a couple of lists on which um, a flavor should be on sale. So let's put this down here. And here I already prepared something so that we have here um, two lists on sale per week one and on sale, sale, sale per week two. And on these days, the strawberry is on sale on Monday, the red rising on sale also on Monday, the cream dream on Wednesday, and the red rising on Wednesday as well. And for the week two, the red rising is um, on sale on Thursday. Now that we have done this, we need to fix this function here. This function calculates the total price of our ice sold. But now we need to also think of the on sales. So in here, we get just a list of on sales. And just to make sure, I will also put the type annotation in here. So I'd say what we get here is a list of on sales. And now for each I sold, we need to find out the factor that is um, necessary to, to calculate the actual on sale price for one for, for one flavor on, on one specific day. So let's do this. We need to create a factor function or a factor value. And this is just 0.5 for now, 
to make it work. So then here we can say times factor. All right. So we have a factor, which is in this case just half of the price. Um, and for all the, the, the um, ice creams that were sold during the week, we calculate uh, the price for the flavor, um, multiply it with the, with the um, size multiplier, and multiply it in the end with the factor that we still need to calculate um, on the basis of these on sales lists. So now, of course, here this function does not work anymore because total price now gets two values. So we give it the first parameter, which is our on sales per week one list. Great. Everything works. Let's evaluate this. And we see down here that now we don't get six euros and four cents, but three euros and two cents. All right, let's actually find the factor. How do we do this? Okay, let's recapitulate what we have. We have a list of sales, but each item of the sales list goes with the help of the map function into the total price function. So in here, we only get one entry of this list, but we get the whole on sales list. And now we need to check if the flavor of our ice sold and the weekday of our ice sold is actually in our sales per week list and then we need to get the factor out of this entry. So how do we actually do this? Well, there is a function in the list module, fortunately, that does exactly what we want to achieve. And this function is called list.find. So have a look, let's have a look at this function. We call it list.find. And let's have a look at the type of this function. It takes two parameters. The first one is the predicate, which takes one entry out of the list and returns true when a given condition or constraint is fulfilled and false if not. And as the second parameter, it takes a list. And in the end, it returns the element that was found. So we take our on sales and we pipe this into list.find. And the first parameter is a function and we use a lambda in here. So we get an on sale so one element of the on sales list and we return true if on sale dot flavor equals ice sold dot flavor and on sale dot weekday equals flavor uh, ice sold dot weekday so this is our it's not the factor in this case it's our on sale we get one item out of the whole list and it's the item in which um, the flavor matches and the weekday matches and then we have here the on sale and out of this on sale we can actually access the factor of our sale for the day Great. So what have we done? For example, when we run this, we have a strawberry sold on Monday with size medium, which means have a look at our on sales per week one. We have strawberry is on sale on man Monday. Great. So our um, function would calculate that the price for, for the flavor would be 1.1 and the price multiplier for the size would be, I think, medium is 1.0. And then we get the on sales factor, which is another 50%. So earlier on, we had uh, six euros and four cent uh, um, for our results. And now we can calculate all of this stuff and we get um, three point um, three euro and two cents. So it's half of it. So let's check if this is correct. So we are going to still strawberry on Monday. Strawberry is on sale on Monday. Red rising also on Monday is on sale on Monday. Red rising also on sale on uh, again on Monday. Cream dream on Wednesday. Cream dream is on sale on Wednesday. 
and Red Rising um, is also on sale on Wednesday. So it means all of our flavors are in this case on sale on the specific days they were actually sold. In the introduction of this episode, I was telling you that I'm going to introduce a new concept to you called currying. This is what we're talking about, what we're going to talk about now. So what is currying? Currying means that if you have a function in F sharp with a specific number of parameters, it is possible to call this function with actually less parameters than the function actually needs. And the return value of this function call is not a, the, the value that the function would return normally, but it's a new function with the parameter that you were giving to the function already applied. Whoa, okay, that was a lot <laughs> and a mouthful. So let's implement it and then I hope you can see what I'm talking about. So we go up here to our salt function. This is the function that we use down here in our sales list, salt Monday, for example. So we have this function and this function takes two parameters. It takes a weekday and the flavor. What is possible now is to call this function with only one parameter. So we could say let on Monday and this value is the return value of the function called sold with only Monday. So here we see that the on Monday is now, let's evaluate this, on Monday is now a new function which takes a flavor and an ice salt. So for example, if we call this now with on Monday strawberry and we, we evaluate this, we see that we have sold a strawberry on Monday. So let's also do a on Tuesday is sold Tuesday and we could Tuesday and we could also do a let on Wednesday equals sold Wednesday. And when we evaluate those functions, we can call these three lines here or evaluate these three lines here. So the first one returns a strawberry flavor a salt on Monday, the second one on Tuesday and the third one on Wednesday. So just to repeat, we called the function sold with only one parameter. It needs a weekday and a flavor. We call it with only the Monday parameter and what we get back is a new function with the Monday already applied. All right, really cool feature I think. Let's use this to, to improve our domain specific language down here. So we can just say here, oh, let's on Monday, And here on Wednesday. So I think this is, in my opinion, much more readable. We can say strawberry on Monday with thighs. So we have our sales list. And in this sales list, we have a strawberry on Monday with thighs medium. So now that hopefully you understand a bit what currying is, I can show you that we have used this for quite some time now. For example, down here when we were piping something into a function i always said that the return value of this expression is piped into the first free parameter or the first free slot of the following function and in this case the function that we are piping into is not the total price function but it is the total price function with one parameter which is the on sales per week parameter already applied. So what is returned here is a new function that has only one parameter left, which is this parameter, the I sold parameter. So this is what we are doing all the time actually, and we have used currying a lot up to now. 
but I hope now you understand uh, what this actually means. And when you understood currying, you also understand this strange um, type syntax here. Because here we see that, for example, the total price function has three parameters, uh, has two parameters. It has on sales, I sold, and a float. All right. In the beginning, I told you, forget the strange syntax and just remember that the first couple of parameters um, are all, always the input parameters and the, the parameter or the type after the last arrow is always the output parameter. And now that we know about carrying, we know the reason for this. Because this actually, what is actually written in here, let's, let's write this down. What is actually written in here is that we have a function that takes one parameter and returns a new function which takes uh, one parameter and returns this parameter. And because this is implicitly um, implemented in F-sharp everywhere, we don't really need those braces here. But it's not wrong. It's the same function in the end. So if you had a function that looks something like um, an int and an int and an int and an int. What is actually written here is that we have a function that takes an input and returns a function which takes one input and returns a function. But because this is not readable at all, we can just leave all this out. And most of the time, it's enough to think of um, this uh, type syntax in the same way that I just told you that the last parameter or, or the last type after the last arrow is the actual output. But it's important to know, and to know uh, or to notice that we can actually call a function with less parameters. Nice. Just before we are going to finish this episode to wrap up, I want to show you that this kind of implementation has a big problem built into it. And the reason for this is that now I set everything up that the total price function down here when we are trying to, to find the on sale always finds an element. But what happens if we are going to use the same thing down here and call it with on sales per week 2. Let's have a look at on sales per week at on sales per week 2. In this case we have the strawberry only on sale on Wednesday, not on Monday. So now our total price function tries to find the one on sale entry of our lists that is fitting to our sold eyes. But in this case it's not finding anything because there is no on sale entry in our, uh, in our list. So when we run this what do you think should happen? Well, they can't really, the, the, the compiler or the program can't really execute um, our code because here we say that we have on sales dot factor and the on sale is not there because it could not be found in our list. So when we actually run this, we get a key not found exception and index blah, blah, blah was not found in the collection. Which means that the list.find function actually throws an exception, gives us a runtime error um, during the runtime of our program when we are calling it and none of the, the, the entries of, of the list that, it's, that is fed into this function fulfills this predicate. This is a pretty huge problem, but fortunately F Sharp has a nice feature that solves all these problems, runtime exceptions, null pointer exceptions that are occurring because an element was not there, but it was expected to be there. This feature is called the option type in F Sharp. It's built into the language. It's a really nice feature. So I hope to join me in the last episode of our F Sharp introductory series. See you there. Bye bye.